If you think it's time to redesign your portfolio but you don't have time to design it yourself, here are three free clonable sites and one paid one, but I think it's worth the price, that you can use on Framer to just get started. If you still haven't used Framer but you want to get started, it is completely free to do so. You just have to sign up and start designing. However, if you want the extra features, stick to the end because I'm going to give you a way to get three months off the pro subscription. Now, let's get started. To use templates on Framer, it is extremely easy. You just need to go onto the Framer side, make sure you are logged in so everything is easier to migrate, and just go onto templates. We are gonna say view all, and you will see here all the templates that you can quickly copy. Uh, we want this one here, you can preview it, and you see like a sense of what that site is and then simply go use template and that will copy that template onto your own editor. So you will be able to open it in the editor and, and just tweak it however you want. And one cool thing about this template is that they usually have different breakpoints. So by default, probably you will have always desktop, tablet and phone, which is really cool because it's something that you just don't have to worry about. What I wanted to do is show you what three of my favorite clonable sites on Framer. And these are specifically for portfolios. They are all very different, I think. And depending on your needs and what you want for your portfolio, you can choose one or the other or just play with any of these and choose. The first one is called Super Normal Portfolio Website Template and it's by Johnny Belton. It's a very minimalistic look on a portfolio, which I personally love. Let's have a look at the preview. Remember that if you want to use any of these, you can just go use template. As you can see, it's very minimalistic. It just has a header at the top, something to catch people's attention. It has the name of the person at the top. And then we have some really cool layouts for selected work. So we have, for instance, this case study. At the bottom, we have the about, which I think I really like this one page sites that have all the essential information in one page. I think it's really, really useful because most people don't always click on different use cases or on the about page. And you can see that if you have analytics, it allows people to stay longer on your site, to read about you and to maybe then choose to click through. But at least in one page, they have all the important information. So let's have a look at how they organize a case study which again, very minimal. I love how they use like a slightly larger size, font size, so it's easier to read. It only has the essential. It doesn't have like huge paragraphs of text that maybe you don't need. And it has some really nice images. So a bit more text. As I've said, this is like a very minimal kind of portfolio that I would use if I were starting out maybe. I just want to show a couple of projects, something that I've done but have the ability to write text and to maybe tell about your role in the projects, tell about what you did in it. And you always have that possibility to do that with this one. Remember that you can always go back and use it yourself and customize it. So within Framer, you can maybe add a bit more text, add a few more images, add a gallery. So there's always that possibility of customize it however you want. But I think as a layout, as the bare bones of your website, it's a really good starting point. The second one that I wanted to show you goes in the line of something that minimal, but I believe it has a bit more to offer. It allows a bit more customization, a bit more information. So if you are a bit more experienced and you want to add more projects or you want to add more information on those projects, I think this portfolio might be a bit better. So let's have a look. There we go. I think just how it loads that nice animation, that nice transition is already really good. And I think this header section is also quite powerful in the sense that it's much larger. It already has the email of the person. Those nice transitions, love them. I really love them. And I think this one has that extra something. See those URLs, those links. Yeah, love that. And having these, instead of just saying maybe 
I solve problems or I design solutions, that kind of thing. Just having like a big header that says product design experience or XR designer or freelance, whatever you want, but it already calls my attention. And then you can add that bit at the top, explaining it a bit more, but it just has that big impact, the way it loads. Let me see, the, see it again. See, that's really, really nice. So yeah, just from top of my head, love it. Then we can scroll and see those nice transitions on the hover, those extra things. If I were looking for someone to hire or if I were looking at portfolios, those are the things that would caught my attention and definitely go for that person. So yeah. And then what I really like is that as you hover, you get a bit more information on the project, which yeah, really nice touch. They even tell you what you can write. So if you remix this, if you use this template, maybe you can use that to add your project title and as you hover, maybe description. So you can say maybe copay as the project title and as you hover, it can say simple banking app, anything, but it's really nice. Let's see how they handle a case study. So I tap on it and just similar to the homepage, I love this header because if I only click on this project and I don't scroll past this point and I just read this, I know what this project is about. I know who the client was. I know what the services were, the industry. And if you are customizing this in, if you are a designer or UX designer who only did part of the job, maybe you can use one of these to say role and you can add UX design or tasks and you can say wireframes, user flows, whatever. So this way of organizing the information and just showing snippets of it that you can really quick and you can really kind of understand, love it. Then we obviously have the description of the project and also what the project is and what it is about and some really cool images. Bit of text, which perfect. And I really like how everything loads. It's very, very nice. Really like this portfolio. And then we can go into studio. And yeah, very similar. See how the information shows up. Very, very nice. I would definitely use this template if I were you, because you just need to tweak the information. Let's just copy it to see how it is. But you can, just change the information, adapt it to your projects. Maybe if you don't want it this black, you can change the background color, you can change the palette overall, but it already has things like the hover state or how everything loads that will add that extra layer of quality that you might be looking for for your portfolio. So yeah, this is very, very recommended template. And last but not least, a different kind of portfolio, a bit more interesting on the style and how they use fonts, but yeah, let's have a look. So right from the beginning, you can already see a different tone, a different use of fonts, this banner here that slows down as you hover, which love it. I really love the use of the palette overall. Obviously these are mock-ups, these are placeholders, but if you manage to kind of match the site's branding with your own projects and how you use fonts and how you use colors overall. Ah, oh, chef's kiss. It has this really nice transitions as well as the previous one. It has this nice scroll. Look at that. Look at how those sections overlap. This is really nice. Same banner. It moves as you scroll, which I love it. And then look at those hover states. As I was saying with the previous one, I think having those extra details on your website will just elevate it and catch your users and the people who watch it attention. And that I think is really important, especially if you're looking for jobs and you want to catch recruiters or companies attention. That's very, very good. Cool. Let's have a look at how they handle each project. So uh, the homepage doesn't have the projects. It's more like a landing page where you can see what that person does and the services. And maybe if this is an agency, what they do. So you have to go onto the work side to kind of look at the projects and same as the previous one, it has those nice little snips of information that you can really quickly see and read nice images, really nice panels of information that as on the homepage, they scroll. So imagine if you need to write your role, what you did, the goal, it's, it's like very, very nice to add that. Then it has like a sweet gallery. I mean, those images are really nice. Even if you don't have really cool images, I mean, those are great. 
and a banner and always like the CTA to get in touch. So maybe if you're a freelance, that's like a good portfolio to have. I think overall, I'm not sure if I would use this one, but hear me out. I love it. If you are someone who just wants to show their voice, their tone, their personality through their portfolio, go ahead and use it. I personally wouldn't use it because I think I always try to let my projects speak by themselves and I don't have that loud avoid like I'm not that like huge brand person that just needs to show who I am all the time I just let my portfolios work and and do the talking but still if you want to use it go ahead use it as a template it's a really really nice one I really love the transitions I love those banners moving I think it has things that as a user catch my attention and make me want to keep scrolling and keep reading and keep like learning about that person, which I think it's really cool if you, as I said, are looking for a job or want to get some sort of collaboration or deal, or if you are someone who wants to show their personality through their portfolio. So yeah, this is really, really nice. And as any, you can copy it and you can tweak it. And yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Before finishing, let me show you another template. In this case, it is a paid one, so you don't have the option to try it out and customize it. You have to pay first. But I think because of its style, because of how it is designed, that I still can't believe that this has been done with Framer, I think it's worth the price. So this is called Dashfolio and it is designed by Cedric Moore. I hope I'm saying his name right. But what he's done is a really unique template that, as I've said, I can't believe this has been designed and developed with Framer. And it almost looks like Notion. It's so clean, it's so organized, and you can tweak all these different links however you want. So this is the template. This is the preview of the template. This is not his real portfolio, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But you can see already how you can customize this however you want. You can add forms you can have like an about page and what i really really like is how clean it is how it almost yeah it feels like a blog like its own os like i don't know i just i love how clean and how minimal it is and let me quickly show you his own portfolio so you can see this in action so this is actually his portfolio and you can see how he's using it for his own information um yeah, these are some of the links that he has. They ha he has a link to the blog, the stack that he uses, and just like a newsletter input. Look at how everything loads. Look at the little transition. It's just so clever. I love it. So, so as I've said, this is not free. I think this is worth $75. Uh, yeah, that is, that's it. But if you want something a bit more professional, something where you want to show what you can do and your project in a more professional, um, yeah, more sophisticated way, I would definitely go with this. You can have the other templates for free, but if you want something a bit more unique, you should go with this. You can even try to rebuild these and do it yourself on Framer, but good luck with that because Cedric has made a great job with it. So whatever template you use, if it's this one, if it's any other paid template or the free ones that I've shown you, I think the main idea or the main goal for you is that you go for something that fits your own needs and your own personality. Don't overdo it just because it looks good like you can use this one that i've shown you before which looks really great but might not be a good fit for your needs and maybe you need something a bit more minimalistic that lets your project speak for their own or you want something a bit more basic because you don't have as many projects any template works and the good thing is that they are designed really well and they already look good so you don't have to put the extra work into thinking how things move how things transition between one page and the other you just need to add your information so make sure whatever template you use you use it because you think it fits your needs and because it works well with you don't go with something that looks good but maybe it's a bit too much for you as i said at the beginning framer is a free to use tool 
However, there are some cool extra features that you only get if you pay for the pro subscriptions. Things like getting custom domains, getting analytics, or using your site for commercial use. And because I want you to try by yourself and see if this is worth it, I'm giving you three months off the pro subscription so you can try it and see how it is. Just use the link that you'll find in the description and add the promo code when you sign up. However, if you don't want to use any of these templates and you just want to design something quick on Figma and bring it into Framer, I made this video about it telling you a step-by-step -step guide on to how to do that. Let me know in the comments if you're using any of these templates and also share the link to the URL so we can all see it. Also, if you want to learn anything else about Framer, let me know as well because I'm more than willing to do so as I really, really like this tool. As always, subscribe and like this video so I can keep making content for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.